Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Between Tamiris and Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented Television. A lot to talk about this week here, obviously here. Um, we're going to talk about... Um, we're going to talk about the um, red, white, blue, gold crossovers in girls basketball. Um, recap on those, um, what teams are hot, what teams are not. Um, boys basketball, we're in a harder league play. Um, you know, obviously what teams are hot, what teams are not. Um, a lot to look at this week here on the podcast. Um, so let's look at, of course, our main story here. Obviously, when you look at at the um, the crossover games, um, you know, obviously the red and what's going to go girls first always is like, you look at, of course, the um, red and um, the red-white games. Um, really wasn't much of a contest. The red showing its dominance over the white. Um, in the blue-gold um, crossover, the blue was mostly dominant, with the exception of Ferndale, um, who knocked off um, Troy pretty convincingly. I mean, we're going to talk Ferndale in a couple minutes as well. Um, so let's look at, of course, the... Um, we're going to go first. We're going to go with the blue-gold crossovers. I mean... When you look at some of the games, I mean, Adams had no issue with Ferndale University. Um, it was a dominant effort for Adams. Um, Ferndale University, we know, is a very young team. Um, Pontiac, Troy Athens and Pontiac, of course, that game, um, that went um, to, um, to Troy Athens, um, 57 to uh, 54-27 um, over Pontiac. Um, Athens has won three in a row, so watch out for them. Um, Coach J.C. Klump's got that team heading in the right direction. Um, and then, of course, and then we have um, Southfield Arson Tech had no issue with Oak Park. Um, I'm telling you right now, I think people need to start paying attention to A&T. Um, now, Oak Park, obviously, with the record, I mean, Oak Park, very deceptive. Um, they're very deceptive. Oh, and um, oh, and three, I think they're starting to score a lot more better. Um, Defensively still an issue, but Southfield, Arts and Tech, they're off to a very good start. I mean, obviously Coach Shakita Coltrane's got that team um, rolling right now. I think the play of Christian Banks, um, they got others as well who's really been, um, you know, playing really well for them. Um, and also, the win against Oak Park, um, either Oak Park or River Rouge, I think was on Shakita Coltrane's birthday. So... Good gift for her um, was a win. Um, but A&T, with the way that team's been playing, they're playing some good basketball lately. I mean, you know, you really got to look at, you know, can they be that dark horse contender in the blue? Um, or can they be, the, they're, they're obviously right now the favorite in the blue, but can they be, you know, a dark horse district contender in that district, considering that, um, you know, that is a very, um, you know, they got an interesting district. I mean, you know, I mean, they're with Detroit Renaissance and with Berkeley. Um, but you got to love what South Florida Tech is doing. Although I still got concerns about them on the defensive side of the ball, which is a concern. Um, but when I look at A&T, um, I think that that team, they can be very dangerous. And I think with A&T, um, you know, I mean, like they. I mean, is, if they can step up defensively, because I, I don't like how they're still giving up some points. They gave up forty six Oak Park, but with that offense and to add to a good defense, I'll tell you what, Ant is going to win a lot of games. I mean, but they're off to a nice start though, and I think that's a good thing to describe A and T, just with the way that that team has been. Um, so really, with them, it's just going to be you know, with them, it's just clean up that defensive side of the ball. I'm still a little concerned about that game with Lavoni Stevenson. That was their only loss of the year. Um, curious to see how that team, how they would do against a team like um, like a Berkeley, um, who I think Berkeley right now, in my opinion, is the second best team in that division. Um, so, a and a lot to like with them. A lot, a lot to like with them. Um... And then we have, um, and then we have, um, and then there's Berkeley. I mean, 
Berkeley had a hard-earned win against Avondale, 51-46. It was a hard-earned game. Um, give credit to where credit's due. Um, obviously, you know, with the Bears, I like where Coach Clay Shaver has that team at right now. I mean, I think when you look at Berkeley, with what he has done in his first year there, the girls are happier, and you notice with the results, they are playing really good basketball right now. Um, I really think, you know, when you look at the Bears, um, I, I, I really look, I really like where this Berkeley team's at right now. Um, I, I think when you look at Berkeley, um, Matty Bozzo's a heck of a player. You got. Avery Wintergarden as well. They got others on that team as well. And I'll tell you what. That team would scare me. If I wanted to, if, if there was a team that I did not want to see come postseason time. Now, people are going to say, well, Detroit Renaissance, you know what I mean? Like, you look at them, they're the juggernaut. Yes, they are. But let's not forget, Berkeley beat that juggernaut two years ago. And I think they have, I think they're, I think they're going to be more prepared this year than they were a couple years ago. Now, albeit, you know, you look at Berkeley and say, you know, you know, this is a team that, you know, I mean, they're going through a transition. Yes, but that transition period has really done them well. It has really done them well. I mean, you look at the record, yeah, I mean, like, the record's not not as where they want to be, but they're winning games. I mean, they have a win against Utica Eisner. That's big. I mean, they played Royal Oak tough. I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean, there's a lot to like about the Berkeley Bears. There really is. You know, there really is. And Coach Clay Shaver has done a really good job with that program. He has done... He's built three programs there. He's built, I mean, he's building a foundation there. I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean, that team, there's a lot to love about the Bears. There is a lot to love about that team. There really is. And I really like the way that team is playing right now. I really do. So when I look at Berkeley, you know, I think they're going to be Southfield Arson Tech's toughest challenger. And I think they're going to be a very dangerous team. Then on the flip side with Avondale, Avondale, they're, I mean, like, um, they played much better. You know, I'll tell you what, they're better than people think. I mean, Roy Christmas done a really nice job with that team. Despite the record and the injuries. I think Avondale's fine. I really think they're going to be okay. Um, they need more from Madison Manyweathers. They're going to need more from her. Um, and I think, and I think he'll get it. Um, uh, Morgan McPherson is another one. Um, now injuries have really hurt the Abedale. Injuries have really hurt them. So when I look at Abedale's case, um, it's just getting by the injuries, getting by the, um, just going through the, um, you know, just going through, you know, just, they're just going through a rut right now. And that's what Avenel is going through right now. So, they're going to be fine. I mean, I'm not pressing the panic button on Avondale. I'm not really pressing the panic button on them. But I think they're going to be fine. Um, And then there's Ferndale and Troy. I mean, Ferndale, of course, um, had no issue with Troy 60 to 18. That was stunning for me when I look at that score. And I, it was hard for me to explain that score. It, it, I mean, like, I, I, when I look at the score, I'm going like, what? What the heck happened? I mean, what happened? I mean, now, yes, albeit, I know Ferndale's very good this year. Ferndale's a good team. I mean, they got three very good players for Coach Keith Paris. Um, but with Troy, I'm going like, what happened? I mean, I mean, I'm going like, what happened? I mean, Troy's got Diamond Prince, 
Reagan Sider, Carly Higginbottom, um, Ellie Cascazis, um, and I'm looking at, and they got a proven coach in Laura Guzman, and I'm looking at, I'm saying, 18 points? I can't believe that. I was shocked when I saw the score. Oh, yes, Ferndale's a good team. I mean, they have a win against Troy Cass Tech. That's huge for them. But for a team like Troy, who's been in the red last year, they took their lumps, and they're, and they're struggling right now. I mean, I know they're going through a transition period, and you got to have it during the year. But in that game against Ferndale, for them to allow 60 points, I don't know how to explain it. I don't really know how to explain that. But with Ferndale, they're going to be the real deal. I mean, they played a tough schedule. I mean, they play a lot of these Saturday showcase games. I mean, they played, you know, a team like Dexter, played Macomb, Dakota, played those two teams tough. But. You know, when I look at Ferndale, you know, is this team ready to make the next step? To me, this team at Ferndale, they look like they can be competitive in. I don't know if I see them being competitive in the red. But I can see them being competitive in the white. And especially being competitive in the blue. I mean, I'll be curious to see when Ferndale plays a and I mean... That's probably going to be the measuring stick game, I think, for Ferndale. It's an a and game. Um, but, you know, I just can't believe, you know, you know, I can't believe that Ferndale is 42 points better than Troy. It just makes no, makes no sense. And I know how proud that basketball program at Troy is. I mean, I know... And I know a lot of good people over there at Troy. I mean, I mean, like, but to see, you know what I mean? But to see that, it's just stunning. Really was. So, a lot to work at with Troy. I mean, a lot to work on with Troy. I mean, I think they're fine. I know they're a young group. They're a very young group. But... You know, you had that red experience. You've been through the wars. I mean, like, you know, you look at, of course, you're one of the teams I mentioned in my, um, in the, in the district is maybe a possible dark horse. But, you know, do I think Troy's going to get there? Absolutely. But, honestly, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, they got to, they got to do something over there. They got to do something to get some competence in there. I believe in Coach Guzman. I think she can get the job done. But they've got to do something over there. For Ferndale, it's just stay in the course. For them, it's just stay in the course. And for me, for them, it's program strength. Program strength is obviously going to be the one that is going to be the um, area where I see Coach Keith Paris I'm needing to address is... Possibly developing your sub varsity team, developing them. You know what I mean? Because you know all, all those kids are going to graduate. You know what I mean? And then how's that pipeline going to look? That's the big question I have for you: Is can they develop a a sub varsity program like a JV and a freshman program? You know they do that. I think they're going to be fine. I think they're going to be more than fine, but. I will be very curious to see how they play against Birmingham Detroit Country Day when it comes to postseason. Because that's going to be their toughest ta- challenger is Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, and that's going to be the area where I think could be the, um, the indicator is where are they at come postseason time playing against a team like Birmingham Detroit Country Day. I think Coach Paris knows where his team's at. But they've got to address, um, they've got to address, like, I think the, 
program strength part of it, if they do, I think they're going to be fine. But that's the area that I think that um that Troy and um, Ferndale is going to need is to address. I mean, they're off to a nice start, um, but that's an area they got to address. Okay, now let's go to the red-white crossovers. I mean, like, red-white crossovers, um, the red, as I mentioned, was dominant, but there were some interesting games um, that were on the plate there. Um, let's go to our um, to our first matchup. Um, Oxford 73, Bloompia Hills 45. Um, to me, this was a shocker for me a little bit. Peyton Richter had 20 points, and Miranda, Allison Hofstetter had 15 points for Oxford. Um, Mia Champagne at 9. Um, what I was surprised about with Bloomfield Hills was you're coming off, they're coming off a really tough loss to Lansing Waverly. Um, Ruby Smith at 26 points, 20 boards. Brianna Young had a double-double, 14 points, 14 boards. Um, Bloomfield Hills was just dominant in the paint in that game against um, Lansing Waverly. Um, but, you know, in this game, I was surprised with how Oxford put up 73 points. That's the most points they've scored in nine years. So that's stunning as in its own right. And you look at that game and say to yourself, I mean, you know, Oxford just really went no mercy. And they did. They went no mercy. I mean, you look at a very good player in Ruby Smith. I mean, like, you know, she we know how good she is. Brianna Young, she's another very good player. And then Ashley Fortner's a solid shooter for Bloopia Hills. So Bloopia Hills, I think they're gonna be fine. I mean, they're gonna be okay. Um, you know, just get back to what um, you know, got them to dance, which is defensive rebounding, offensive rebounding, you know. Basically bully people in the paint. I mean, that's really what I have to say. Uh, about them. With Oxford, it's just, you know, just keep doing what they're doing. I mean, they played a tough enough schedule to, um, you know, and obviously for them, you know, it's not just, it's not the red. Honestly, for them, it's their district. I mean, you look at a team like Grand Blank, um, Oxford's already got a win against Davison. I know they still got to play Lapeer, um, but against Davison, you know, but against Grand Blank, I mean, I watched a Grand Blank game against Goodrich, and Grand Blank did not look good against them. I know they got um a new coach in there, but I was surprised with how um Grand Blank's girls they had a tough one against Goodrich in the um Hamity Classic over there. Um, you know, really, you know, for Coach Taylor, um, legendary coach at Grand Blank, um, but just surprised with, you know. This is the struggle that Grand Blank is going through right now. I mean, they're I mean they got they got a good team there. I mean, Raven McLean's a solid uh, Raven McLean and Chelsea Bishop are solid players. But they're just going through a transition period right now. And it's unfortunate for them they gotta have to happen during the season. So I was surprised with how Grand Blank and Goodridge went. Um you know, Grand Blank's struggling a little bit, but I think Grand Blank looks beatable. I really do. I mean I think Grand Blank's got a shot. I think Oxford's got a shot at that district. I really do. So if I'm Coach Rachel Breyer, I'm really looking at, I'm not looking at the league as much as I'm looking at getting my team ready for the postseason. Because I think that's where I think Oxford's got a good enough chance to win is in the postseason. So that was my most surprise impact of the week was Oxford's win against Lumpia Hills. Really surprised how that one went. West Bloomby had no issue with Groves, 88 to 35. Um, both Davis sisters dominant. Um, it was going to be a tough match for Groves, regardless. Um, you know, West Bloomby, we know, is very good. We know that, you know, and I mentioned about them last week. I still have those questions with West Bloomfield. Um, you know, about them, like, um, you know, not being challenged, um, not being tested. And it happened to them against Rockford where they end up being tested and they just they didn't answer the bell in that game um, against, a, um, against a good Rockford team. I know they talk about revenge, motivation, and all that, but, you know, you got you to gotta allow yourself to get tested. And, 
you know, and having a lot of these blowout games, it does, sure, it gives the others a chance to play, but it doesn't give you, you know, but it also, there's a double-edged sword when it comes to that. So, and I mentioned a lot about that last week when I talked about West Bloomfield was the, um, you know, they got to allow themselves to get tested. They've got to. And, you know, beating people by 35, 40 points, that's not going to test you. Um, especially when you look in the postseason, especially when you look at their district um, with Farm Tills, Mercy, and Birmingham Marion in there. But albeit Far- Birmingham Marion's been struggling as of late a little bit, Farm Tills, Mercy, we, they know they don't have their best player in Oblin, Alban, and Albanzi. Um, and, um, you know, right now, West Bluefield, they look really good right now to get the number one seed in their district. But albeit that district's over at Farm Tills, Mercy. So, you know, so that'll be very interesting to watch, um, you know, going forward there. Um, and then um, on Groves' side, you know, you just got to take this and move on. I mean, you got to look at the lessons that Coach Allison Heidi, um, you know, you know, is going to be teaching her kids. And, you know, you got to take this lesson and just move on from there. And I think that's really what the direction that um, Coach Heidi's going to have to go through with West Bloomfield. I mean, with Groves is, you know, you just got to take this lesson and move on from it. Um, so that's really what the thing is that if I'm her, I'm taking that as a lesson. So. We'll see how that one goes. Um, Clarkston 46, Seaholm 22. Um, as I mentioned with Seaholm a couple weeks ago, this was going to be, their two toughest games were going to be this week. Uh, we're going to be Clarkston and then Stony Creek. And against Stony Creek, uh, against Clarkston, you know, Eliana Roback had a nice game, 16 points. Um, Brooklyn Covert at 8. Um, Clarkson's defense was really good in that game. Um, give credit where I know Coach Aaron Good now must have called his team out after um the game against Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, allowing twenty two points to a really good C home team. Um, that says a lot. Um, they did a really nice job on Addie Flynn. Um, so when you look at at C home where they got to work at. And I think this is a good lesson for coach Chris Manchester is, you know, you got to look at, you know, positives, you know, see where you got to look at and then move on from it. And then when you look at, um, when you look at from Clarkson's standpoint, you know, this is a good bounce back win after a really tough loss to Birmingham Detroit country day. Um, if you're coach Aaron good now, um, that's the approach you have to look at. Um, so basically, for Clarkson, this is another win for them. Moving on, um, moving on to the next one. So that's my take on Clarkston and in Seaholm. I mean, it was a Clarkson up winning that game by twenty four points, and you know they're moving on. So this game obviously was a big test here, and then we have the two um, we have the two undefeated matchups coming in. Of course, that was um, Stony Creek Royal Oak. And then um, Lake Ori and um, North Farmington. Um, Rochester knocked off Harper Woods 50-35. to 35. Alice Max at 30 points um, for Rochester. Get another dominant performance for Alice Max. Um, and, I, and I look at, and I always talk about this with Coach Bill Thurston, is, you know, you have the dominant big. You have, Al, you have Alice. Um, she can do everything for you. But it, for me, and I mentioned this two weeks ago, was, they still need that guard to come through. Now, I know Kylie Robinson's not back yet, but when you look at Rochester, um, imagine, you know, obviously having Robinson helped, but it still doesn't address the guard situation. I mean, like, obviously, so that's something for Coach Bill Thurston to um, to look at is who's going to be that, that scoring guard? That's the big question for Coach Thurston is, can he find that scoring guard? That is the big question for them. Um, and then on the other side, Harper Woods, I mean, Lato- Coach Latoya Tone, um, rough week. Really rough week. Didn't play well against Canton. Obviously, they ran into Justice Trumbull. Um, but, and then the play like this against Rochester, really tough week for the Pioneers. 
just really, really tough week. So for Harper Woods, it's just they've got to find a way to get back in the thick of it because if they don't, it's going to be a really long year for them. And they've got to get something figured out and quick. They got to really do. Um, and then the and then the two undefeated games coming in. Um, you had Royal Oak and Stony Creek, and the North Farmington and Lake Orion. Um, the Royal Oak Stony Creek game was really interesting to me because both teams had experience. Um, both teams, you know, were battle tested, and this ended up being a sixteen point game in favor of Stony Creek. 46 to 30. Um, Merrick Schlaubach and um, Sarah LaPrairie had combined for 29 of the 46 Stony Creek points. Um, Ivan, I mean, Ivan Vaj had nine points um, for um, for the Cougars as well. Um, so I was really surprised how that, that game turned out because I was surprised Stony's zone. Stony Creek's full court trap defense shut down Royal Oaks offense. I mean, I was surprised that they did that. And obviously their Stony's defense turned them to offense. And being at home always helps. But you gotta get credit where credit's due. I mean, the players are playing really well right now for Coach Columbus Williams. Um, they're playing good basketball right now. Um but then for Royal Oak, that answers me one question. You know, and I mentioned it in the top 23 this week and around the OAA poll was, is Royal Oak ready for the red? And then that game against Stony Creek, it proves to me, it proved to me that maybe they're not ready for the division. They're not ready to move up yet. And, you know, you look at that team who's got a lot of experience. You know, you got Lucy Freitag, you got... There's several others on that team that are really good players. They're really talented players. Coach Brian Zapata has a talented group. And you really look at the situation, how that is, is you got to look at is, you know, you got to look at, you know, Stony Creek, we know is a very good basketball team. I mean, they're, I mean, like they were, I mean, I know Ke Coach Kellen James built that team. Col Coach Columbus Williams has taken over, basically kept that team, um, kept that team going. And they're off to a 5-0 and start right now. Um, and a lot of that, obviously, is their experience. I mean, Sarah LaPrairie, Merrick Schlaubach, um, Izzy Avaj, they've all been through the wars. They've been through the wars. And, you know, you look at Stony Creek, they've been through... They've been through battles. I mean, they've been through a game against Brighton. They've been through the game against Romeo. Bloomfield Hills, they were tested there. I mean, you really look at that. You really look at the Stony Creek team. They're a solid team. They're a very good team. Royal Oak, on the other hand, you look at them. Yeah, Royal Oak's a good team. A lot of experience. But, you know, be, playing experience in the red, you're going to have to play those teams eventually. If you're going to be a successful program, and I know Coach Brian Zapata knows this, I mean, you got to play teams that you're going against that are uncomfortable with. I mean, you got to play the West Bloomfields. You got to play the Lake Orions. You got to play the Clarksons, the Stony Creeks, the Rochesters, the Oxfords. I mean, like, you know, you got to play those teams because they're going to get you better. They're going to get you prepared for the districts. And obviously, when you look at that district over at um, Warren Cousineau, I think Roy Oaks got a good chance to do very well in that district. I do. So... For Royal Oak, it's just moving on and getting ready for the next opponent. Stony Creek, same thing. And then there's Lake Orion, North Farmington. Um, this game was built to be really interesting. Um, two teams undefeated, um, but it really wasn't much of a contest, and it was pretty much over in the first quarter. Um, Lake Orion ended up winning that one 58-27. Um, of course, Lake Orion balanced scoring. Lake Orion, of course, in, in their five wins this year, they had five different players lead them in scoring. That says a lot about the balance of um of the Dragons, considering they lost nine seniors last year. Um, you got you got a player coming back from an ACL injury who's playing really good basketball right now. Um, you got a transfer coming coming came in from Oxford who's playing really good basketball right now. Um, the stat, I mean, like. 
She's a very good intangible player. You also got your defense is really good. You got a couple returning girls who have been playing really well. And I'll tell you what, Lake Orion's a machine right now. They really are. I mean, the play of Izzy Walensky, Nevea Wood, Ryan Palachek, um, Lexi Strohshine, um, Charlotte Pabloski, Ellie Britt, Grace Hornshine, I mean, Danny Heck. They've been playing really good basketball. The Lake Orient's been playing really good basketball. They've been through the wars. They've been through the battles. I mean, you look at the Plymouth game. I'll tell you what right now, Plymouth's a scary. Plymouth's a scary team right now. I mean, they sit 7-2. and two. I mean, 7-2. and two, You know, they won six games twice in two years last year. And Coach Ryan Ballard's done a nice job turning that team around. One of the one of Plymouth's two losses were to Lake was to Lake Ori. And the Dragons are a very good team. So you look at what Coach Bob Bridges has done with that team. You know? I'll tell you what. I mean, like, honestly, if I if, if we had to do like a midseason review, if I do like coach of the year, I would have to give it to Bob Bridges. I mean, what he has done with that program, what he's done with that team. When you lose nine seniors, you know, and then you're already up 5-0 and oh right now, that says a lot. And that team can grow. And that team can get better. I mean, I'll tell you what, right now, Lake Orion's a scary team. They are going to be scary. And they're going to get better from here. They're going to get better. Coach Bob Bridges has got something. sub varsity teams are solid. Um... A lot to like about that team. A lot to like about the Dragons. And then up North Farmington, you kind of wonder with them, this is their wake-up call. Because you look at, of course, the schedule they had, you know, the 5-0 start, um, could have been easy for them. You know, obviously, you look at last year with North Farmington under Coach Jeff Simpson, they went 22-0. and Um... They lost in the district finals to um, Farm Tills Mercy. Lost a lot. Lost seven seniors. Um, so you knew it was going to be a transition period when you're basically starting a whole new team from scratch. Coach Michael Allen takes over the program. Uh, um, then, of course, you have Asiya Jihad. Um, you know, it's going to be your best player. Hannah Hart's a solid player. And then Anaya Billups transferring in from Detroit Edison. Um, the schedule, they got out to a nice start. So I read the column from Brandon Fossum, um, of, of Hometown Life, and he wrote a column about Farmington, North Farmington, saying, it's North Farmington back to where they need to be, and they really haven't left. I mean, like, you know, and then when you look at the schedule and you say, wait a minute here, you know, you're beating teams that are, you know, you're supposed to beat. Now, the Adams game, you know, that kind of went back and forth. I mean, that third quarter was only a four-point game, five-point game, and then and then North pulled away late. Um, but in the Lake Orion game, that first quarter told the whole story. It really told the whole story. Because in that game, Anaya Billups got frustrated, got teed up, um, her body language basically affected the entire game. It basically did. One thing that I would tell players, you know, if you're having a bad game, don't don't go down on yourself. Just don't go down on yourself because it affects your coaches, it affects your teammates, it affects everybody in the gym. And you know, if you're if you're very energetic, you know what I mean, very passionate. I mean, like, you know, then you, then it's going to be, you're going to win games. I mean, win, wins and losses, you know what I mean? Everything takes care of itself. I'll tell you what, with the Nia Billups, college coaches look at that. They look at, they don't look at the talent. They look at the person. And in that game against Lake Orion, she was held to one point. I mean, college coaches look at that. And... 
you know, and especially your attitude. They look at the attitude, and <laughs> and they see how do you, how do players respond when things go rough, and. And I think she's. I think she can handle it better. I think she can handle it much better. Um, but you know, I've looked at the film on her, and yes, yeah, she's got a six-three wingspan. But there's times she gets disinterested at times, and that's a concern. If you're Coach Michael Allen, that's a concern for G for um because you know you got Asia Jihad. She's playing good basketball. But you need Anaya Billups to, you know, step her game up and not get disinterested. Because if she gets disinterested, it's going to affect it. And I'm going to tell you what, on her case right now, you know, the way Lake Orion plays defense, just imagine what Farm Tills Mercy is going to do. Imagine what Vermeer Marion is going to do. And especially imagine what West Bloomfield is going to do. And, and, th and the reason why I say those three teams is because they're in your district. So, she's going to have to change something up a little bit. So, that's my take on, you know, that's my take on um, North Farmington is they've got to, you know, they got to, they got to, they got to regroup. They really got to regroup. And, and for Billups, you're one of the, you're one of North Farmington's best players. You're going to have to really, you're going to have to, you know, if you have a bad game, just don't get down on yourself. You know what I mean? Just don't do the antics, you know what I mean, from the from that game. Because colleges are going to see it. I mean, I know D1 schools are looking at you. But you can't just do the antics. You know, just go out there and play basketball. That's what I would say right now. Um. So that's my take on that. You know, let's go to the boys. Um, obviously, when you look at the boys' side, um, in the in the um, blue, um, Oxford's I still think still the best team in that division. Um, with the way that, that team is, um, I I was really disappointed with Stony. Um, you know, like after the win against Sterling Heights, I thought they would have took the next step. They took a they took a step back a little bit here. Um, they had a tough loss to Pontiac. Um, Pontiac, we know has been around 500 a little bit. They're start, I mean, they've been around 500. Um, I like where coach Andrew Myers has that team at right now, just with the way that that team is. Um, and then there is, um, you know, and then of course there is Avenue. Avenue, I think is the second best team in that division. Um, the yellow jackets have been starting to, you know, been up uh, and been going like a, like a roller coaster. They've been going like up and down. You know what I mean? They're back up again now, which is good for Coach Jared Thomas. Is you know, they gotta keep that upward trajectory. You know, if they do, I think this is I think they're gonna be an interesting team to watch um going forward. Um, so that's something to really watch for with them. Fernell University's been struggling a little bit. Um 60 20 loss to Oxford. Um you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, I know they're a young team. Um, Coach Josh Nix has got, um, you know, he's got some things to figure out with them. I mean, like, you know, they're just going through a rut right now. I mean, that's really what it is right now with with Seaholm. No, sorry, with Ferndale University. Um, Rochester, you know, they had that. They've been very competitive. Um, despite the losses, I really like where they're at right now. I like where Coach Nicobola has that team at. Um, so that's something to really look at with them. Um, and then you look at, um, Royal Oak. I mean, Royal Oak is a, Royal Oak and Berkeley, that was a very interesting game the other night. Um, 39-32 was that final score. Defensive low scoring game. Um, credit to Coach Joe Sermo's team for playing really well defensively against, um, against Royal Oak. Um, Royal Oak we know has got, Proven shooters on that team. I mean, deal. I mean, like, um, you know, you got um Nick Hoffman there. You got um, you know, you got um, you know, I mean, like they they did a pretty good job against Royal Oaks offense, who was coming in pretty good. I mean, like they were they were very good offensively, and then they just did just enough to, you know, to defensively just to win that game. I mean, like 
people will say, well, look at the schedule and all that. And, you know, when you look at the schedule, um, you know, give credit where credit's due. I mean, you know, to Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley, I mean, like, they're starting to turn things around a little bit, which is really good sign for Coach Joe Sermo. I mean, like, just really interesting to see how, you know, they've turned things around. And, you know, I think Berkeley could be a player in this division. But when I look at right now how the division's shaped up right now, um, I think it's going to come down to is Oxford, Avondale, and I think Berkeley right now stands at third place right now. So that's really what I'm looking at right now when it comes to the division right now is those three teams. And then, you know, I think it's I think it's Stony Creek, Rochester, um, Ferndale University. Um, you know, and I mean, Pontiac's in that middle. I mean, Pontiac really is in that middle. They could be a player. Um, so, but I think Pontiac right now, I think was it's the fourth best team in that division. Um, then it's Rochester and Stony Creek, and then um, and then Ferndale U right now, just with the way that that um division is right now. So, we'll see what happens in that division. I mean, like a lot still to play for. Um. But right now, I would have to give the edge to Oxford with the way that that team is right now. Um, obviously, we know about Jake Champagne. We know about the, um, we know about the, um, you know, we know that both Katie brothers have been playing well. Luke Stofan's been playing well. Um, so we'll see what happens with Oxford. I mean, we're going to see what happens going forward with them. Um, and then let's go to the um, white and... Troy showed why they're the leaders in the clubhouse. I mean, the big three, Mason Parker, um, Chase Kuyper, and John Whiteside combined for 51 of the 61 points in their 10-point win against Lake Orion. Um, I think when you look at, at this division, honestly, I can't trust Harper Woods in this division one, one second. I, I can't trust him. Yes, they got Julian Young. Yes, they got others on that team. Isaiah Lewis, another one. Um, but when I look at the division right now, I think right now I would have to say Troy's the best team in that division. Lake Orion's in that conversation. They've got to be in that conversation. Yes, they took a loss to Troy. I mean, but still, this team is fine. I mean, you look at this Dragon team with Zach Parks, um, you look at, of course, Ryan Washoe. Now Washoe got in a foul trouble in that game against Troy. If he were, if he, if he played, you know, and not getting the foul trouble, I think that's that's a closer game than ten points. I mean, that game was close in the score indicator. I mean, Lake Warren took the lead several times, but Troy's experience ended up being a difference in that game. I mean, so that's the credit where credits do, though. I mean, Troy right now is the leaders in the clubhouse in that division. Um, just with the way that they're playing, um, Andrew Lake has been a really solid guard for them. Um, really helping to move Mason Parker to the outside. Um, you know, Chase Kuyper, I, I think it's Troy's best player is Chase Kuyper. I mean, just with the way that, um, he, he plays, uh, he rebounds, he'll get you a jump shot. He uses his height really well. I mean, a lot to like with coach Gary Fralick's team, a lot to like, I mean, they got, I mean, they got, I mean, like, um, but the bottom line is, you know, if, you know, you look at, I think Troy's got a shot to go far. They got a good shot. And I know the motivation for Troy is simple. Win your district, which isn't really tough because they got Birmingham and Brother Rice in that district. Um, now, Brother Rice has not been the same team since losing to Novi Detroit Catholic Central. I mean, they just got beat by East Cantwood. It must in um at um in it at um Albion College. They just got beat by them, and you know there's some concerns there. I think with Brother Ice is, you know, sometimes you know they're going through a rut right now. Troy hasn't really taken that rut yet. They haven't really been that rough patch yet. I know Lake Orion has. I mean, obviously there are two losses to Notre Dame Prep and Clarkston, um, but. You know, I mean, I don't, I mean, there's some teams that have been going through some rough patches right now. Troy Athens, they're a team that's really gotten off their, um, off the rough patch. I mean, they really, they've turned things around. I think they won three in a row. I mean, they knocked off Lakeview in a heck of a win for them. Um, and then, you know, they've, um, 
They beat Boopy Hills. Boopy Hills, we know, has been getting better. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what Coach J. Scott has going forward for Troy Athens. It'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. I mean, really interesting to see how things go for that, for them. Um, Seahome's been struggling a little bit defensively. Um, they're in a rut right now. Um, so they're going to be fine. I mean, um, Bloomfield Hills, young team, they're going to be okay. Um, I think, you know, there, there's, it's like for Bloomfield Hills, it's like they're putting a puzzle piece together. They're putting a puzzle together. And you got pieces, it's just putting them all together. That's really what it is with Bloomfield Hills. Now, a team that I think, I don't think a lot of teams want to play right now is Farmington. Byron, Coach Byron Johnson's got that team turned around a little bit. I mean, they, they had a rough start to the year. I mean, they were 1-4 and four to start the year. 3-1 um, and one since. I mean, 3-1 and one since. I mean, wins against Redford Union, um, Avondale, and um, Seaholm. Um, I'll tell you what, Greg Grace is playing really well right now for Coach Byron Johnson. And they got, they got some other con contributors as well. So Farmington's a team that's really scary right now. They are a scary, scary team. Um, Harper Woods, we mentioned, of course, they had no issue with Southfield Arson Tech. Um, but like I said with Harper Woods, it's hard for me to trust them right now. It really is. Southfield Arson Tech, they're really struggling right now. I mean, they are really, really struggling. And for Coach Terrence Porter, I mean, the schedule gets tough for them coming up. I mean, it'll be very interesting how the Warriors do, but, you know, they've been competitive at times, but then sometimes they have not. So, you know, be very curious to see what A&T does going forward. Um, and it'll be very interesting to see how this division plays out. But when I look at the white right now, overall, I would have to say Troy is still the best team in this division. Um, I would put Lake Orion right now second, Harper Woods third. Um, now, people say, well, you can put Harper Woods second and Lake Orion third. It's fine. But, um, but and then you have Athens four, um, Seahome five. I mean, like, um, see, I mean, actually, Farmington, actually, Farmington, I would put over, um, I would put Farmington four right now, Athens five, um, Seahome six, um, Bloomfield Hill seven. So that's my take right now in the division. I mean, Southfield eight. So that's my take in the division right now. Um, in the white is Troy right now has that edge right now because of the experience um, factor they have right now. Those three guys, legit players. I'll tell you that much right now. Really legit players, really talented team over there at Troy um, with the Colts and legendary coach Gary Fralick over there at Troy. Um, then let's go to the red. Um, obviously, when you look at the red, um, you know, North Farmington, they had a big win against West Bloomfield. Um, you know, 60, it was 61-49. Um, credit where credit's due for Coach Tom Negotian's team. They found a way to win on the road. Um, not an easy place to win in, in West Bloomfield, in their gym. It's not an easy place to go in and win. Um... West Bloomfield, I think, is going to be fine. I think they're going to be okay. Um, Coach Annette Jordan, um, they had a struggle early on, went through a rut. Um, they bounced back really well, played good basketball. Um, give credit where credit's due. Um, you know, I think they're going to be okay. Um, just ran into a very good North Farmington team. I mean, like, so really, that's really where um, I think they're going to be okay. I mean, I mean, like playing a team like North Farmington, they're gonna be, they're gonna be fine. I think there's two teams in this division. I think three teams that could be in some trouble in this division. Um, I'm gonna go Oak Park first because I think Oak Park to me is in some trouble because they played Jackson. They had a lull early on. They were down big. They were down 26, 17 and a half. Explode in the third quarter. A lot of that being Geo Hutchins. And it ended up being a back and forth game, but Oak Park fell to Jackson um in a very close one, 
Um, they've had some tough luck. I mean, Coach Durant Shepard's team's had some really tough luck. I mean, like, I know they played at Albion College. Um, Shepard went there, um, played there. Um, so when I look at Oak Park situation, they're going to need more than Hutchins to step up. I mean, like, besides Hutchins, I mean, they need somebody else besides him to step up. And you look at it, it I don't think anyone's been able to do that. And that could be a concern going forward for Oak Park is they've got to find somebody who who can step up alongside Hutchins, you know, because if they don't, they're in trouble. I mean, that's really what it is with Oak Park is they've got to find someone who can help Hutchins carry the load. If they do, it's a fine basketball team. So that's really the case here with Oak Park is they've got to find who is that guy who can step up for them. That's going to be the key going forward for them. Um, Another team I think gets in trouble is Groves. Groves has lost five straight. I mean, they have not been the same team since the loss to Plymouth Canton. Um, now, albeit life in the... They played a tough schedule to their defense. They showed some signs against Clarkston. You know, they had the lead at the end of three, but ended up falling that one 52-49. Tough way to lose that one. Um, so when I look at this game here, and I look at Clarkston, and I think at the end of the day here, um, I think Groves is going to be, um, I think they're going to be fine. But then I question myself, does Groves belong in the red? You know, I mean, they, I mean, there's some games where they've gotten absolutely destroyed and there's some games where they've lost close. So, you know, the record is very deceiving because Groves plays in a very tough conference in a tough division. So, you know, so if you're Coach Mark West, you just got to make sure your kids are positive. You got to make sure your kids are, you know, not down on themselves because if they are, that's trouble. So I think Groves is another team that's in some trouble. And another team that I think is, is in some trouble is Ferndale. So when I look at the Eagles case, I mean, this team, they have not been the same since the loss to West Bloomfield. I mean, they lost to UD Jesuit, and then they just lost to Muskegon. So, where's the issue here? I'll tell you where the issue's at. I mean, this is still a young basketball team. A very young team. People are going to say, well, I remember last year getting, you know, looking at myself. You know, I criticized Coach Juan Rickman for his schedule. Playing a tough schedule. With, but this time here, they got a young team. Now, with Ferndale's case last year, that team gelled playing through that tough schedule. And they went on and won the Division II state championship. I don't know about this case here. Because you look at what's going on here with Ferndale. Is they've got to go. They're going through a rut right now. They're in a rut. And they got North Farmington coming up, which is brutal. So if you're so you gotta wonder, is Trenton Root doing too much? I mean, how is the freshman developing? I mean, they've got some games where they look good, but is the schedule maybe getting to this group? That's the big question I have for Coach Juan Rickman. Is is the schedule getting to this group? They sit four and four. Um, they got a tough one with North Lumen. So, and when you look at that district, Warren Lincoln's in there, and that's a difficult. And Detroit Pershing's a dark horse. So that could be very dangerous for Coach Juan Rickman and the Eagles if they don't turn this thing around and quick. I mean, they could be in some serious trouble. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And then Clarkson, I think they're playing fine right now the way that team's been. Um, and then, and then there is, um, you know, and then, and then, I mean, I think Clarkson, the way that team's been playing, I think they're going to be fine. Um, had to survive Groves and Beverly Hills. 
Groves, not an easy place to play. So, interesting to see how that one turned out. Um, but credit where credit's due, Clarkson found a way to win that one. Because of their experience, they found a way to win that game. And then there's Adams. I like Trenton Lagarde a lot for this team. He fits right in with that group. He really does. Adams right now, the way that team is playing, I think they could surprise some people. They could really surprise some people and make a ton of noise. I think that the Highlanders, the way that team is, they're a scary group. That is a scary, scary group. And I think there's a lot to like about Rochester Adams. A lot to really like about them. So that's something to really, really watch for is how Adams does going forward. Obviously, Peter Kardashian, William G., um, but Trenton Lagarge is really sh showing out for Rochester Adams, just the way that he's been playing. Um, I really like where he's been. Um, obviously taking a lot of pressure off William G allows him to do other things, which is good for Adams. Um, you know, really this Adams team, they're not big, but they play hard, a lot of experience. I'll tell you what, right now, I really like a lot what I'm hearing about Rochester Adams. So, <laughs> that's my take on the Highlanders. <laughs> a lot to like when you look at the Highlanders. Um, when I look at the red right now overall, um, I think North Farmington obviously is the best team in that division. I think Adams is number two. And the reason why I say Adams over West Bloomfield right now is because, yeah, West Bloomfield played a tough schedule. But I just think when you look at Adams, if Adams plays well, they shoot the ball well, um, I'll tell you what, they're a scary team to deal with. Um, and then I think right now I would have to say Ferndale is three. Clarkston is four. Um, and then you have, um, and then I would say West, and then I would probably say like West Bloomfield, five. Um, right, let me, let me correct, let me, let me phrase that. Let me correct that again. North is one. I would say Adams two, West Bloomfield three, Clarkson four. Um, I would say Oak Park, then Groves. Um, but I but it wouldn't surprise me if I put Groves over Oak Park. I mean, that's really what it is right now. It's pretty even between both Groves and Oak Park with the way that both teams are um, in this division. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward when it comes into, um, life in this division. So it's not an easy, it's not an easy division, but we'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to see what happens, but right now, when I look at, when I look at it right now, North Farmington right now has the edge in this division. Um, but there's several other teams there that could do some damage as well. So we'll see what happens going on. I'm heading into this week here, so. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Take care. See you next week. God bless all. God bless everyone.